year old is sent off to war in his paper uniform, <laughs> you know, his, his buddy, you know, and uh, the the things are not. Uh, I got to give you this one line, which I loved. It. The, the the kids are walking through the rubble, and they're and in, and JoJo's buddy says to him. This definitely is not a good time to be a Nazi. <laughs> they, they got the Russians coming and the U.S. the Yankees coming and the Brits coming. I've got one more. Such is highly recommending the two popes. Have you seen it? No, I haven't yet, but I almost watched it last night. No, but anyway, I apologize to all zealous patriots who still weep for the 1980 Olympics. But it was kind of no fun. No one is wept. Oh my God. Nobody oh, is. You know nobody. What? But it is still fun to make. It was still fun to make fun of the patriotism. Yeah. We Sorry. don't accept your apology. <laughs> okay. We will not accept that. <laughs> all right. Well, hopefully we'll all around to talk about the 50 year anniversary. Right. But I wouldn't bet on it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh my goodness. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, temperatures soaring this Are we weekend. Grilling? Are We're we grilling. grilling. Okay. We're grilling. Well, for grilling grunt. Offers. We ain't going to have Kenny, Kenny come over and put a wiener on a screwdriver and heat it up with a propane Gross. torch. That he bought at the gas station. Right. No, you're going to Grunhofer's Old Fashioned Meat Market at the north end of Hugo on Highway 61. You're going to load up. It's going to be a great grilling weekend. Uh, while you're there, you might as well pick up 14 kinds of summer sausage, including mm-hmm. wild rice, cheddar, dill pickle, pill, pickle, you can get pickles there. I can say pickle. You can get a gherkin there. Garlic, cranberry, wild rice, jalapeno, <laughs> hot pepper, cheese, mm-hmm. pre-made oven-ready meatloaf, steaks, ham, bacon, double uh, or smoked salmon. The jerky you will gnaw on till you get to your car. <laughs> and uh, 130 different flavors of lean pork brats that must be grilled. Uh, you will enjoy this place. It's become the Garage Logic Meat Palace of Life. Mm-hmm. Of Life. Grunhofer's Old Fashioned Meats on Highway 61, just at the north end of Hugo. You can't miss it. So I've got a question for you. What? Yeah. Are we are we wrapping or are we are we going to another segment here, sir? I gotta tell you one more story. Oh, I put my okay. computer away. That's you won't need it. You'll need to pay attention. You won't need Beautiful. it. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay, let's just do that. All right. smell a cigar. My staff alerted me to this story from a magazine called Fast Company, which is a monthly American business magazine uh, that examines the future. And this was uh, emailed to me by a friend of mine, Scott Wolf. And it's a story, well, you got to hear it to believe it. It's nearly impossible to manufacture a modern product without the use of fossil fuels. Even if the design doesn't use any plastic or other fossil-based materials, most transportation still runs on gas or diesel, and most factories still run on power made with natural gas or coal. In a new project, the European European energy company Vattenfall decided to see what it would take to make one item, a crib for a baby, in a fully fossil-free way. Oh, okay. All right. We wanted to see whether or not it was possible in 2020 to do something like this. If something can be done totally fossil-free, says Anouk vinstra dash Egifs, <laughs> who helped lead the project at Vattenfall. The good news is that it's possible, but it's also very challenging. The wood used in the crib came from a tree cut down with an electric chainsaw. Well, but you had to get electricity to run that, didn't you? An electric chainsaw, a technology Um, that doesn't yet work quite as well as a chainsaw running on gas. They might mean a battery-powered chainsaw. The tree needed to be a bit thinner than usual, which also meant that you have less wood to work with and makes you more creative in the design, she says. So Anouk is a woman. The tree itself was chosen because it had to be cut down due to disease. Well, of course, they wouldn't have harmed a healthy tree. The wood was delivered to a mill on an electric van. 
then processed at a sawmill using green electricity. We don't know what that means. Could that mean it was solar-powered, I wonder? Maybe. The mill? Maybe. For the cribs bedding, the team initially considered using cotton, but then realized that because they aren't yet fossil-free options for transporting cotton from other countries, it would have to use local flax, which was hand-woven into linen using a loom. Hmm. Wool that normally might have come from South America or Australia came from a Dutch island called Texel via sailboat. The steel industry is notorious for using large amounts of energy and can't easily rely on traditional renewables. So the tiny piece of steel in the crib's logo came from a lab that ran on hydrogen to make the world's first steel without fossil fuels. Wow. Vattenfall worked with a mining company and steel producer in Sweden to test a system using hydrogen, which was successful. A new pilot plant is now under construction to make steel at a larger scale. The first small piece used in the crib was delivered from Sweden by electric train and electric car. It's not a scalable way to make a crib now, and it took the team months to locate the right materials. Uh, It's also a way to make the transition away from fossil fuels more tangible for consumers. The issue for... Uh, The issue of climate change and themes like CO2 emission reduction are such theoretical, enormous themes that are hard to grasp, Veenstra Dash Idjifs said. I say it's Idjifs because her last name is capital I, capital J, and then small case FS. Yeah, that's I've never never seen anything like that. If you look at the objects that you use on a daily basis, like the toothbrush that you use or the pajamas that you put your kid in, we don't tend to think much about all the processes behind that product. But there is a huge gain to be had if you, for example, electrify those processes and bring down CO2 emissions. Uh, I've I've got issues. Keep reading. Yeah, well, I haven't given you the punchline yet. The crib was a symbolic choice. Our ambition is to enable fossil-free life within one generation. Uh, So for us, it felt like a natural step to make something for the next generation to sleep in and hopefully wake up a world where fossil-free is the standard and not the exception. Which is that going to cost us, Joe? Want to know what that costs to build that crib? Tell me. Anybody want to take a shot at it? I'm going to start at, I would say, two grand. $28,885. $28,885. <laughs> I was a little off. I was a little off. I thought I was high, too. You know what? $29,000. I'm having twins. I'll take two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here's Holy. my issues. I circled a bunch of items on here. What a bunch here. of fruitcakes! Yep. Electric chainsaw. Number one, if it's, it doesn't matter if it's electric or battery powered. How is the electricity made in order to charge those batteries? Okay. Well, not to mention, what would the casing of it be? Right. Plastic? The elect- which was a fossil fuel product? The electric van. Yeah. How is that charged? Right. And plus, uh, wouldn't that be made of steel and have rubber tires? Somewhere, and, yeah. yeah. Correct. Yeah. Um, fossil free. They didn't want to use cotton because they didn't want to use um, the, it was a transport. They couldn't get it there without using a gas-powered The, the boat. thing with har- harvesting either cotton and or flax, you're probably using a combine that combine probably running on diesel. And then the third paragraph, we mentioned electric train and electric car. Again, how are they, uh, how are they, um, where is that electricity coming right. from? Right, where are they fired? charging it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then finally, uh, electrifying those processes can bring down CO2 emissions, uh, not if the electricity is coal um, generated. So 28885 bucks for this Ding, ding, crib. And I would say they tried to go fossil-free, and I'm pretty sure they failed. I think so, I too. E- even if accidentally. I, I don't so think too. they did. I, I don't think, think so they uh, achieved success so That was a, a 28000 A fun article. It really was. Uh, will you send it to me, Kenny, So I because I know GLers are going to want to read it. No, they're not. Oh, Kevin's, yes. I, That's the kind, I already sent I mean, it to you. You printed it. I know, but I deleted it. Here, I'll find it. I'll here. find it. I'll find it. Here it is. Here, that one's a clean version because Kenny circled that other stuff. Okay, here's what I love it's about soiled. you two so much. What? I said, can you send it to me so I can I post it, it on the GL Facebook page? I think we did <laughs> These good. These idiots <laughs> handed me the printed <laughs> copy. Oh, there it is. Hold we on, hold good. on. Tape it, tape it to the computer tape screen. Tape it to the computer screen. <laughs> Welcome to our world. He's going to put it on his Facebook wall. <laughs> Just put it up on the wall like the lady on TV. Sooch, I'm going to hop in my gas-powered truck and drive the hell out of this town. So wait a minute. If I wanted to grill uh, uh, Grunhofer's wieners in my garage, could I get a flamethrower at Frats? No. Oh. You'd probably get a propane torch. Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. Not a flamethrower, you moron. Oh, I'm going to melt the snow. What do you snow. think? They sell movie props oh, at Frataloni's? Yeah. Hell yes. Hell yeah. It's a great... 
flamethrower scene in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Could I get that at France? No. Oh, okay. No. Can you buy movies at France? What? You know you what the boost? temperatures this weekend expected to be what they'll be? I'll be making a hard store, uh, hardware store run, and if I do, it'll be frats. Amen to that. Grand and Dale is my location. And while you're sitting out there grilling, I want you to listen to the podcast. Find all the podcasts that you would like to at podmn.com, specifically Garage Logic.